Well, good morning again to all of you, uh, and good morning to all of you joining us online. Uh, one of the beautiful things about Calvary Church is that uh, we don't just exist in a building. Uh, we exist in a building here, we exist in, in our Quaker Town campus, we exist all over the place online, and we are always desiring to be in our community. And one of the things that I wanted to let all of you know about was something that happened last Sunday uh, on July 4th. July 4th, there was Community Day in the Quaker Town borough. So there was a car show, there was a pancake breakfast, there was fireworks, there was all sorts of stuff. And right in the middle of Community Day was a church service. And we were invited to be a part of that church service along with East Swamp Church. And we had a blast there just being uh, in the midst of our town, in the midst of our community, and just getting to meet people who uh, have either not been at church for a long time or who've never been to church. And they were able to go to a church service uh, in the middle of the park. So we're really excited about just the way that God uh, has used uh, us in the, the Quakertown community. And also we are excited about how he's continuing to use us here in the Souderton community. Well, as Dave said, we are in the middle of a series called Connect, Connect. And let me give you a little bit of a background as to why we're doing this series. Let me explain to you what's going on. So about a year and a half ago, uh, Charles, Jay, myself, the leadership of Calvary Church, we came together and we began to discuss and we came and we decided that we needed a new mission, a new set of values, a new set of priorities for Calvary Church. And so our mission for Calvary Church is that we desire to be a church that continues what Jesus started. That's what the CWJS is, continues what Jesus started. And we do that by living out lives according to the values of connect and impact. And so what we say is, is that as we connect with God and he impacts our lives, we are then sent to connect with others and impact the lives of others. And so we came up with all these plans. We came up with this stuff. We spent three weeks actually vision casting it, three weeks telling about different priorities that we have. And then this thing called COVID hit. And it just wrecked all of our plans. But when you're in the middle of your plans being wrecked, just remember that God's plan is still in effect. And so we are excited about the ways that God has kind of just changed our direction of how we can live out this connect and impact. And so what we've decided to do is spend the entire summer, the entire summer focusing on connect. That's why we have Wawa sandwiches after service today. We just want to have time where we can just connect with each other, get to know each other a little bit. But it always starts with connect with God. And so if you were paying attention in the series so far, you would see this kind of pattern that goes back and forth, back and forth. We'll talk one week about connecting with God, and then we'll talk another week about connecting with others. Like, how do we do life one anothering, loving one another, uh, serving one another? And so that's what's happening. And we're going to be doing that all summer long, focusing on connect, which would lead us to the fall, where we will then transition and focus on impact and how God impacts our lives and how we can impact the lives of others. So we're going to take a long time just to saturate the culture of Calvary Church with connect and impact because we feel that it's important. And today we got a story that really focuses on both that connecting with God and that connecting with others. And so we're going to take a look at it. Today we're going to read a story in the book of John. And in the book of John, Jesus washes his disciples' feet. So if you have a Bible, you can turn to John chapter 13. If you don't have a Bible, let us know. We believe that the Bible is filled with life-changing truth, and we want you to have access to the Bible. So let us know, and we'll get one to you for free. But we are looking at John chapter 13, verse 1. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize what I'm doing, but later you will understand. 
No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord and rightly so, for that is what is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So we got this pretty amazing picture in this story. And the way we're going to study this story today is we're going to ask ourselves three questions. We're going to ask ourselves three questions. The questions are this. What do we need to do? What did Jesus do? What impact needs to be done to us? So what do we need to do? Let's start there. Well, what do we need to do? Well, Jesus says so right at the end of the story. He says, do as I've done. Now that I've done this to you, now go and do this to one another. But how does that look? How exactly are we supposed to do that? How are we supposed to actually imitate what Jesus does? How do we continue what Jesus started? Back in third grade, there was an art competition. And I decided to make a picture for this art competition. And I made a picture of Beetle Bailey. For those of you who are young, Beetle Bailey was a character in the Sunday comics of the newspaper. For those of you who are young, a newspaper was where we got our news before Instagram. <laughs> and so I made this picture of Beetle Bailey and it looked exactly like Beetle Bailey. Every detail was perfect. My third grade uh, mind was like, wow, this is amazing. And I was so excited to bring it to my art teacher. I knew that not only would I be able to qualify for the competition, but I would probably win because this looks exactly like Beetle Bailey. So I bring it up to my art teacher and I didn't make the art competition. In fact, I got disqualified. Do you want to know why I got disqualified? Because I traced the picture. <laughs> Apparently, you're not allowed to do that for an art competition. Now, why? Why can't we do that? Well, if I had drawn the picture and I had just looked at the picture of Beetle Bailey and drawn it, well, I would have qualified because I still would have been relying on my own skill sets and my own abilities. That's not what, that is not what happens when you trace. When you trace, you're not relying on your own skill sets and your own abilities. You're simply falling in line step by step with the original artist's work. And while tracing is bad for a third grade art competition, it's exactly the concept that we need to have in mind when it comes to continuing what Jesus started. We aren't supposed to rely on our own skill sets and our own abilities. Instead, we are to fall in line step by step with the original artist's work. And in order to do that, you have to be connected to the artist. You see, when we talk about connecting and impact, it kind of exists in this circle of connecting with God and, and, and being impacted by God, connecting with others, impacting the lives of others. It has to start with connecting with God. It has to start there. Because if you're not connected to God, you can do all the connecting with others and impacting the lives of others that you want, but it will be fruitless. It has to start with connecting with God. So if the first question is, what do we need to do? And the answer to that question is, we need to continue what Jesus started. And the way that we continue what Jesus started is by being connected to Jesus. Then the question is, how do we connect to Jesus? Well, I'm going to answer the question with a question. And that question is the second question that we need to apply to this, to this uh, story. That second question is this. Well, what did Jesus do? What did Jesus do? 
We're going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to have Andrew and Justin come back up, but instead of the guitar and keys, they're going to bring a, a, a water basin, and they're going to wash each other's feet. We're not going to do that. <laughs> That's not happening. But you know what? There are churches that actually do that. There are churches that have feet washing ceremonies. And you know why they do that? Because this story is so impactful. And if you understood just what was going on, especially like, I mean, we don't like feet to begin with. Nobody wants to wash each other's feet today. But back then, they were either barefoot or wearing sandals. And they're walking around in just dirt and waste and just not good stuff. And so washing someone's feet was reserved for the lowliest position. And here's Jesus, who's the one who has all authority, and he washes his disciples' feet. And so what happens normally is when we get this application of that Jesus gave us this example of being a servant leader, and we need to be a servant leader, we need to be a servant leader, and that is a very valid application to this, and that is an application that you need to take away from this. But if we stop with just looking at how he was a servant leader, then we miss something very important. Because Jesus wasn't just an ethical teacher that somehow gave us a good example to follow. Jesus is not just a servant leader, but in this action, Jesus is claiming the title of the suffering servant. Back in the book of Isaiah, back in the Old Testament, the Bible split apart into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The New Testament starts when, when Jesus enters the story. Back in the Old Testament, there's a prophet named Isaiah, and he, he writes in Isaiah chapter 53, and actually he writes in the, in the chapters beforehand of the description of this suffering servant. And in Isaiah 53, you see this description of this suffering servant, and we see that... Uh, he would be pierced for our transgressions. He would be crushed for our iniquities and so on and so forth. And Jesus, by claiming this, this title of suffering servant and by, by doing what he does, actually points and claims the way that he would die. That's kind of a, a jump though, right? You're like, how did you get there? Well, let's look at it a little bit closer. You got to understand a little bit about John and how John writes. John writes all of these little details into his stories. In fact, when he starts a story and he adds all of these little details, pay attention. Pay attention, especially when John writes about a festival. Whenever John writes about a festival, usually he's doing that for a purpose. And usually he's doing that for you to look at that festival and also look at Jesus and see how they connect. Let's look at the first verse of this chapter because there's so much just in the first verse. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Again, let's pay attention. John makes a point of bringing the Passover festival. Jesus is the Passover lamb that would take away the sins of the world. Jesus knows this. He knows that his hour has come. We see it in the verse 1. And then what does he do? He goes and gives an ultimate picture of his love to the ones that he has been with this whole time. Jesus is giving this beautiful lesson of love. And what does he do? He lays down his outer garment. If you look at the descriptions of John, he just, he's, he's all about descriptions. He's all about these pictures. He lays down this outer, outer garment, similar to how the shepherd lays down his life. There's all of this imagery that John is doing in there. And if you're still not sure, then John tosses this conversation between Jesus and Peter. And Jesus and Peter have this conversation, and we need to understand what's going on there. Look at verse 8 again. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. What's going on there? Is Jesus just like really passionate about clean feet? I mean, is he just like really against athletes' feet? Doesn't like toe jam? Like what is going on there? Jesus isn't talking about just clean feet. He's talking about a spiritual washing. He's talking about a spiritual washing. And if Peter can't even accept Jesus washing his feet, how can he humble himself 
to accept that spiritual washing. Because we have to understand what's happening between Jesus and Peter at that point in order to understand actually what's happening between us and Jesus as well. So again, let's look at the questions that we have for this story. What do we need to do? Well, we need to do what Jesus does. Well, what did Jesus do? Jesus laid down his life so that you and I will live. Well, then that leaves us with one last question. How do we need to be impacted? How do we need to be impacted? Let's go back to Peter. I love Peter. I love Peter. You know why I love Peter? Because he's a screw up. I love Peter. He gives me so much hope. Because I'm like, Peter, you and I, we got this, man. He's always messing up. He's always saying the first thing that comes to his mind. But when Peter refuses, he goes, no, you shall never wash me. What Peter's actually doing is making a statement of pride without even realizing it. Peter is making a statement of pride that also reflects my pride and your pride and all of our pride. To the point of like, Jesus, you can't do this. You're too good for this. Let me do it myself. Like, you shouldn't be cleaning me. Let me clean myself. And the reality is, is that Unfortunately, far too often, I have the same attitude when it comes to my own spirituality. Jesus, you really shouldn't clean this. This should be done by me. And I might not consciously say that, but my actions reveal that. But Jesus is crystal clear. Unless we are cleansed by him, unless we are washed by him, we have no part in his kingdom. You see, this is where connect with God begins. This is where it begins. And connect with God always leads to impact. It always leads to impact. You connect with God and he washed Jesus. Because of Jesus, we are washed and cleansed. And we need to understand that that is necessary. We need to understand that we need to connect with God. In other words... We need to understand that we enter the story separated from God. If you understand that we need to connect with God, then you'll understand that you enter the story separated from God. That because of sin, and sin is simply when you do something that God doesn't want you to do, or you don't do something that God wants you to do, and that's a simplistic definition. The more global definition is the fact that humanity outright declared rebellion, our first ancestors declared rebellion against God when they sinned, and the repercussions of that have continued throughout history, and the very real consequence of that is this eternal separation from God. And God provides the solution to that. We could try all we want. We could try to make up that separation and make up the distance of that separation on our own. But it's not going to happen because the only way that that can happen is through the work of Jesus. And so there's a necessity to be connected to God. But how do we accept this work of Jesus? Well, it's, the Bible tells us. The Bible says so in Romans. It tells us simply like this. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. That's it. No hoops. No hoops. That's it. It's through Jesus. It's through Jesus. And it's absolutely necessary. Absolutely necessary. And when we do that, we accept the cleaning of Jesus. We accept the washing of Jesus. And that's where the connection with God begins. That's where it begins. And if you're kind of like thinking to yourself, it's like, I, I just don't know. If you're kind of thinking to yourself like Peter, like, I, my feet are pretty dirty. You shouldn't be touching me. If you're thinking, my life is pretty dirty. Gee, I can't come to Jesus. My life is pretty dirty. Well, let me just remind you of the feet that Jesus washed that night. Jesus washed feet that would one day run and scatter away from him and abandon him. Jesus washed feet of someone who would go and walk to religious leaders and betray him. Jesus washed the feet of the Peter that we just read about who would go and deny him. 
Those are the feet that Jesus washed. And he's certainly able to wash you as well. And when we do that, we are connected to God. But it only happens through Jesus. When we look at Jesus' response to Peter, I, I kind of expect Jesus to kind of chuckle when he's talking to Peter. I kind of, I've always pictured Jesus, like he, he kind of forget the emotions of Jesus, that he was fully man. And I kind of just picture Jesus kind of chuckling when he's telling Peter, settle down, Peter. For those who've been bathed, they only need their feet washed. Like I, I kind of picture that, him kind of chuckling there. But the word for bathe, actually, it says, he that is washed. It implies that someone else has to do the washing. And that person can only be Jesus. It can only be Jesus. But what about that second part? What, what's going on there? So we read this and we say, Jesus answered those, verse 10, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. Well, if you've been bathed, why do you have to have your feet washed? Well, what's going on there? What, what, what's going on spiritually? What's going on theologically? What, what? The cleansing of Jesus is secure. Once you connect with God, that is secure. Salvation is not the key here. But there is a daily act of just coming before God because we are connected to God, of just coming before and confessing our sins, asking God for forgiveness. Not to secure that connection, but because and as a result of that connection. Not to secure our relationship with God. That already happened when we have that initial response to Jesus. That daily action is because because of that relationship with God. There's a daily need for confessing our sins. It's just like in every relationship. When you harm someone, when you do something wrong against someone, you need to go and ask for forgiveness. I mess up all the time. You have to go no farther than my family, my wife and my kids to find out, yeah, there's plenty of times I have to go say sorry. You can go talk to any staff member. I'm sure there's no one on staff that will tell you, yeah, he's completely free of, 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 from, from messing up. They'll, they'll tell you, no, he, he's caused some problems in the past. And I've had to apologize. Why? Because I'm in relationship with those people. And I apologize to them because I want that relationship to remain healthy. I don't want something to come and, and kind of just get in the way of that relationship. Well, if we're in a relationship with God, it's the same thing. Whenever we mess up and hurt someone else, guess what? The person who is hurt the most is actually God. So there's a need for just daily confession, daily coming before God and asking for forgiveness. Let me give you an example of what that looks like. When I was in fourth grade, apparently third and fourth grade were these pivotal years. I don't know what's going on. When I was in fourth grade, I was a pretty good kid. I, my dad's over here. Don't, don't listen to him. I was a pretty good kid. But one day, halfway through the year, for the first time, I ended up getting detention. I was talking in class. I got detention. I think the teacher got way more joy than she should have after, for giving me detention, but I got detention. Here's the deal. I never told my parents. I got detention, and I didn't tell them. For three weeks, I'm carrying this burden. I'm carrying this secret. I'm carrying this kind of anxiousness. For three weeks, I never told them. Well, someone told them eventually. And my mom came to me one day and she goes, so you had detention? Like, my heart dropped into my stomach. I was like, what's going to happen now? I mean, my mom's Puerto Rican, guys. It's not really that bad of a reaction. You should, it's true. Like, you know, just saying. So I'm like, what's going to happen now? And my mom just looked at me, and she just scooped me up and held me close and hugged me. She goes, why wouldn't you just tell me? And all of this shame that I had just kind of just melted away. She's like, did you, did you think I would be mad? Did, and she just held me and told me over and over that she loved me. Guys, God's just waiting to scoop you up into his arms, saying, why didn't you just tell me? And the thing is, he already knows. 
And he just wants to scoop you in his arms and say, don't carry that anymore. That's not for you to carry. That thing that you're walking around with, just kind of ashamed of, that, that's not for you to carry. Just, just tell me about it. Just confess it. I'm right here. I'm willing to just hold you in my arms as close and as tight as possible and just remind you that I love you. That's the point of daily confession. That's the point of confessing our sins to God on a regular basis. It's not to supplement the work of Jesus. It's because of the work of Jesus that we're able to do that. Now I'm going to go back to that first question. What do we need to do? Well, normally, I've heard this passage preach, and normally what I hear is, now go and serve one another. Go out and be a servant. And like I said, that's an application, but that's not what we're going to give you today. Remember, connect with God and then connect with others? Next week, you'll get to connect with others. Next week, you'll learn about serving one another. In fact, we have a guest speaker next week. His name is Tim, Tim Golly. He'll be here next week, and he'll be talking about serving with one another. This week is all about connecting with God. Look at when Jesus talks and tell, gives that command. What does he say? Go and do likewise. But what does he do first? He washes the feet. He washes the feet. The only application that we're going to do today is focus on Jesus and the washing that he brings. If you've never responded to Jesus ever in your life, that's where it starts. That's where connection with God starts. It's as simple as that verse that I just read. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that is it. You will be saved. And you can do that today. In a moment, we're going to have Justin and Andrew come out for real. And they're going to sing a song. They're going to sing a hymn. It's called Nothing But the Blood. And here's what we're going to do during that time. You're going to stand up during that time, and you can sing if you'd like, but I invite you not to sing right away. I invite you to just spend some time in reflection. I invite you to spend some time just thinking about the one whose blood actually can wash away your sin. And if you need to confess to God something, do it now. Do it now. Don't go out and do it later. Do it now. If you need to do that for the first time and you need to make that decision to be a follower of Jesus, do it now. If you're just like, you know what, I've done that, but I've been carrying this thing for a while. I've been carrying this just thing that's been causing me shame. or I've been carrying this secret for a while. Confess that now. Let him scoop you up into his arms and just say, I forgive you and I love you. And if you don't want to do that alone, because sometimes that's hard to do alone, I'll be right there. Just go grab me. You can come up during the song. You don't have to wait till the end of the song. I'll be right there. You can grab Dave. We'll both pray with you. If you want to come up after the song, after the service, we used to have time for prayer after the service, come up. We'll pray with you. The point is, this is, the application for today is just about you and God. Not about you and others, you and God. Spend some time talking with him. Spend some time in reflection. And if there's something you need to confess, whether for the first time or for the millionth time today, do that. Because he's waiting there with his arms wide open and he's ready to say, it's okay, I'm right here and I love you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your love. And Lord, I ask you that you would begin to make that love real today. I don't fully know exactly what to pray right now. Be honest with you. But Lord, I do know that you are ready to love on people in a very powerful way if they will let you. So Holy Spirit, we invite you to just spend some time with us. That if there's anything that needs to be confessed, if there's anything that needs to be just dealt with right now, that you would give people the peace 
and the courage to do so. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. We praise you for your amazing love. And we praise you and acknowledge that that love is unstoppable. Make that love overflow in our hearts today. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.